Hello world! Today, I'm going to go over some basic orbital maneuvers, altitude changes, inclination changes, as well as geosynchronous orbits and how to return your ship to Kerbal Space Center. The first one on our list is altitude changes. So what we're going to do is open up our map screen and place a maneuver node. What we're going to do something called a Haman transfer. The first step in Hamid transfer is to raise your apoapsis to your desired altitude. So what we're going to do is burn prograde in order to gain speed and push our apoapsis out to a higher altitude. Once we get there, we'll burn prograde again to gain speed and raise our periapsis to match our apoapsis. So we're in a circular orbit again. So with our maneuver node, we're going to gra drag the green prograde marker out and make our put our apoapsis at our desired altitude, let's say 200 kilometers. And we are going to execute this burn. Now we're going to set up another maneuver node at the apoapsis. And again, push the prograde marker out until our orbit is just about circular. So there you have it, we have now raised ourselves from a 70 km orbit into a 200 km orbit. Now, there's a special type of orbit called the geosynchronous orbit. When your craft is in a geosynchronous orbit, this means its orbital speed matches the rotational speed of the planet it's orbiting. To get your craft into a geosynchronous orbit, you have to be at, the, at a specific altitude so that your orbital speed matches the planet's rotation. In the case of Kerbin, this magic altitude is 200 no, 2,868 kilometers. So let's get into a geosynchronous orbit. We're going to follow the same procedure we just did. We're going to make a new maneuver node, extend the apoapsis out to 2,868 kilometers. You're going to execute that burn. And then you're going to set another maneuver node at your apoapsis and circularize your orbit. Now you'll find that no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to reach exactly circular orbit with your main thruster. So what you're going to do, you're going to have to use RCS thrusters. Luckily I have some packed on this ship. I'm going to turn on my RCS and coast to apoapsis. The reason you want to, go to burn at apoapsis or periapsis is because these are the most efficient times in your orbit to burn. So our periapsis is a bit low, so let us point prograde and use RCS thrusters to raise it. Alright, now again at a periapsis we will use the RCS thrusters to fine tune our orbit. Quick note, I did set a maneuver node at my periapsis. This is only so I have a timer on the bottom here as to when I'll hit the periapsis. I'm not using a maneuver node. You'll notice that as you come closer to a circular orbit, your, your orbital markers will be, seem a bit jittery. This is because of random floating point errors in the game's code, which makes perfectly circular orbits impossible, but this one is close enough. So now that we've engaged time warp, you will notice that our craft stays above an exact point on the planet, and no matter how fast we go, we will stay above this same point on the planet. This is used in real life in the cases of communication satellites. It's very useful to have a satellite abo above a specific point on the planet's surface. Now, the next maneuver I'm going to cover is an inclination change. Right now we're in something called a geosynchronous orbit, but we're also in a geostationary orbit because of the fact that our inclination is near zero. A geosynchronous orbit that isn't stationary which simply means that it has an inclination. So let's try changing our craft's inclination. To do this, we're going to go either normal or anti-normal. However, due to the problem with the maneuver nodes in the game, when you try to burn normal or anti-normal, you'll end up also burning prograde or retrograde. So I'm going to do this manually. The problem with the game's maneuver node is that it doesn't account for the fact that 
normal changes as you burn normal. So, I'm going to do it manually. When we're in, when you're in a 90 degree orbit or an orbit with zero inclination, normal is always perfectly north. So I'm going to set my heading to zero or just about zero and start thrusting. However, as our inclination changes, nor where normal is will change. So you can wobble your ship back and forth to make sure you're always burning normal. If you see either your your apoapsis or periapsis moving, that means you're burning either a little bit prograde or retrograde. So as you can see, I have changed our inclination a bit notice pretty noticeably, and I've barely changed our orbital altitude. And if I wanted to make sure I was still in a geosynchronous orbit, I would simply make the same adjustments I did earlier. So the next thing I want to do is teach you guys how to return your craft to Kerbal Space Center after a successful mission of any sort. This is best done from low Kerbin orbit, otherwise the planet will be so out of sync you won't be able to tell where to actually land uh, so that you're landing on a specific plot on the surface. So I have done the liberty of moving us to a low Kerbin orbit again. Uh, you also want to make sure your inclination is zero. So you can do the other old trick I told you guys and set the moon as your target and make sure your ascending node and descending node are at zero. I've already done this. So once you're in a low Kerbin orbit with zero inclination, you simply want to set a maneuver node at any point and burn retrograde so that you are going down anywhere in this sea to the west of, to the east excuse me, to the east of Kerbal Space Center. You want to land not too far off though. Just ahead so that when the atmosphere slows you down, you end up landing right on top of Kerbal Space Center. You can also use your rockets and your parachute to make sure you actually land in Kerbal Space Center. So let's go through and see how well I can do this. All right, so my parachute's deployed and I'm a bit off, not too much, I'm within eyesight, so I consider that close enough. And I guess it's good practice to do these sort of things, to make sure that when you start making space planes, if you haven't already started, that you're more used to landing back at Kerbal Space Center, which is obviously a big feat if you're using a plane and can land back at the runway. So, as we slowly drift down to the planet, I will bid you adieu, that's all for this time, and I will see you out there. Skadoosh.